Uh, first of all, thank you, Alberto. That's a great presentation, very insightful, and hopefully uh, this is a very tough act to follow up, so hopefully you will find this interesting and we can have a conversation about data science. So, first I would like to start by one of the common phrases that we have at Facebook is like, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And I'm not a public speaker per se, but uh, I thought that I wanted to share my experience about data science and how we can overcome the gap between Latin America and the Northern Hemisphere. So that's why I'm here. And just to give a brief presentation about myself, my name is Mario Calderon. Um, I'm from Lima, Peru, like many of you, and I love uh, ceviche and pisco, so we can skip that question in the Q&A. Uh, <laughs> one of the things, and you might wonder, how do I end up working for Facebook? Well, I had the privilege to join Facebook in 2012, so I'm almost eight years in the company. And it wasn't easy. There's no straight line, right? There's no like, hey, I'll apply because I'm very good and they will hire me. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, in 2011, I was studying a master's degree in Norway, in Oslo. And I was like, man, my dream job is to work for Facebook or Google. So I'm just going to apply for it, right? So I applied for it. And I was lucky enough that a recruiter actually pay attention to my application and reach out to me and say, hey, you know, we're interested for, uh, on you. Uh, so just one question, do you have a European passport? And I was like, oh, damn, no, I don't. Sorry, you know, we are not sponsoring visas this time, so, you know, it's not gonna happen. So I was very disappointed. And that was towards the end of my master's degree. I was in Oslo and I was like, okay, I'm very stubborn, so I'm gonna keep going. So I sent a message to Mark, this in 2011. I wrote a pitch about great ideas that he could implement in Facebook that would drive the next hundreds of millions in revenue. Guess what? Who thinks here that he reply? Yeah, no, he didn't reply actually. <laughs> As of today, he hasn't come back. So I'm still pending on that re response. But I believe in karma, right? Um, I think if you do good things, good things come back to you. So a few months later, I was looking into a career portal, like every day, I was just refreshing it. And this time I saw a position that said, Latin American Spanish speaker community operations. I had no idea what it was, but I was like, okay, Latin America, that's me. So I reached out to the, to the recruiter and she said, yeah, actually we're sponsoring visas. So long story short, I applied for it. I prepared so much, so much that I knew everything about Facebook. And I got the job. So in 2012, my dreams came true, and I joined Facebook. So I moved from Oslo, Norway to Dublin to start uh, my, my, my career at Facebook. That's almost eight years ago. Fun fact, uh, my sister who's here, Carolina, joined Facebook a few years later, and we were in the same team for a couple of months. That was a bit tough, very good for the family that we split. <laughs> so actually I joined a new team a few months later as a data analyst for SMB, where I get involved into the revenue analytics. And I was there for four years, really uh, great experience, got to know more about analytics, uh, built up my profile, and you know, as Alberto said, it's all about networking, it's all about building connections with the company, and if you do that, you definitely have a great shot to keep moving with your career. So a few years later, I joined the mobile partnerships team, where I work as a data science strategist, which is a combination of consultant and data analyst, uh, where I work uh, in close collaboration with telcos around the world. To give you a taste of what we do, I'm gonna play uh, a video in the following minutes, but just to give you an idea of what my team does, we try to accelerate the access to internet around the world. Something that's key, specifically for Latin America and for us to bridge that gap with the Northern Hemisphere. So, just an example of what we do in the following slide. This is Internet Para Todos, and this is an effort in collaboration between Facebook and Telefonica and developing banks in America.
So, how do we connect the unconnected? This is one of the key missions of our team in collaboration with Telephonic in this case, because it's challenging, right? Like, especially if you look at Peru, it's a very uh, challenging terrain with low density, especially among the highlands and the jungle, and where these people are now, you know, working at 2G connection, most of them. So, and the, the ARPU is very low. So in this kind of challenging scenario, uh, Telefonica and Facebook and uh, developing banks have put together an internet wholesaler uh, that will be providing internet for these communities. I'm not going to go into details into this particular project, but yes, it's, it's a way of giving you a taste of what my team does and what my role entails. So, today we're going to talk about data science. And first, one of the things that my father used to repeat uh, to me since I'm a kid is knowledge is power. Uh, this is uh, a set by Francis Bacon, and you know, it's It's hard to predict, um, sorry. <laughs> it's hard to predict, especially about the future. And this might be sound like a joke, but it's true. Uh, forecasts, you know, who will it forecast? They're most of the time wrong. Uh, but I remember about these three books that uh, we talk about since I'm a kid in which they talk about the explosion of knowledge and how knowledge societies are the ones that are going to rule the world. So this is a quote for, from Alvin Toffler, which tells you that knowledge is the highest quality of power, right? And things haven't been more truth than nowadays. Uh, why? Because there's an explosion of data. And data is the key element of knowledge structure. Some people argue that uh, data is the most powerful resource these days. And I think the jury is still out, but if we believe that premise, we also have to understand that we are entering the fourth industrial revolution. A revolution that is driven by data, by IoT, by digital transformation. The access to GPS-enabled phones is just changing the way we see things. And it will keep changing moving forward. As you know, 90% of the world's data was generated over the last two years. Just take a second and think that. 90% of the world's data was generated in the last two years. It's an exponential growth that's representing tons of opportunities, but at the same time, challenges. One of the very interesting statistics that uh, I'd like to, to talk about is that your mobile phone right now has more computer power than the machines that were direction in the Apollo 11 in the moon landing. So that's incredible, right? So much computer power in just your phone. But it comes with challenges, as I said. Data accumulation is happening to a pace that we cannot handle it. How can we split the signal from the noise? And that's why data science plays a big role. Data science is not the silver bullet, but if applied with the right sense and direction, it can help you to navigate this data explosion. Data science is uh, in the center between computer science, math and statistics, and uh, domain of business knowledges. It helps you to extract knowledge from data, whether this is an structure or a structure. One example of unstructured data is, for instance, social media feeds, right? There's no columns telling you user, there's no columns telling you this is the kind of uh, action that the, the user was taking, but we can actually make sense of this data through APIs, for instance. And data science is also a hot topic. This is the interest index of data science, uh, yes, as September uh, this year, and what you see is the interest in the field is growing and growing and will keep growing up to the right. Why? Because data science can be applied to any industry, whether it's health, whether it's transport transportation, or governmental. But one thing that also we want to make clear is that you might have heard about all these terms. Raise your hand if you heard about artificial intelligence, deep learning, data science. Yeah, everybody here. Do you know the differences? Okay, doesn't matter. The thing is, like, we tend to use it interchangeably. And I don't blame anybody doing that, 
but it's important to take care of making a clear difference among them. So artificial intelligence is the umbrella term that gathers machine learning, which is a subset, and then deep learning. So when a company tells you we're using artificial intelligence, yeah, sure, they might be using it. But the question is like, are they in the cutting edge? Are they using deep learning? Or are they using just simple equations, simple models that are trying to predict churn, right? So there's a big difference between them. And what happens is that data science is, I see it as the fluid, right? That kind of like glow that sticks them all, and it's a framework that helps you to actually make sense of all these other fields. Ultimately, they power what we call data-driven decision making. You might have heard about it, and these days, if you want to succeed as a company, as an entrepreneurship, you need to have a data-driven decision-making mindset. And just a few examples of the difference between these two. Uh, when it comes to machine learning, you know, banks, banks have been using this for many years. I remember working for Banco Falabella uh, 10 years ago, and they were already using decision tree models to calculate the, the risk of each individual and also to personalize uh, CRM communication. But nowadays, Tesla, for instance, is leveraging on deep learning, which is at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence, to uh, power self-driving technology. So that's the difference. And also, artificial intelligence is powering things we love. OK, this is Netflix. This is my uh, profile. And uh, this is about personalization and scale. I don't know how many of you have a guest account here in your Netflix account? <coughs> no one? There you go, few. OK. Well, I would recommend you to do that because algorithms actually can give you bad recommendations if you don't split your behavior with somebody who's visiting. So, you know, I have this thing that don't mess me with algorithms. I have guest accounts for every single service that I do, and uh, I enjoy having my personalized recommendations when I do them. Another example of AI that's very um, interesting is Discovery Weekly. I enjoy it. I wait every single Sunday to, for it to be delivered to me. Why? Because they have managed to create uh, a personalized uh, recommendations based on two things. Machine learning pattern recognition, which is, of course, when you like take into consideration each song and make uh, similarity scores. But also, they have leveraged in human appreciation uh, for music curation. Why? Because they leverage in all the playlists that have already been created by other people to recommend songs that you haven't heard from them. So this is unique, and that's why it has become that successful. But AI and data science are not only used for consumer uh, end products. We also leverage for them for early disease pre prediction, self-driving cars, and smart cities. So ultimately, what I'm trying to say here is that data science and AI will be the technology that will push us forward. And that's why we can be lagging behind. Because I'm running out of time, go, gonna go very quickly in the next ones. Uh, data science can also go wrong. And this is something that allegedly happened with Netflix, where you had recommendations that were personalized to uh, your ethnic group. So in this case, what we're seeing is like African Americans being represented in the covers, which is a bit misleading, right? Because if you look at these movies, actually, their roles was less than a minute, right? So data science also can go wrong. Not everything is shiny, OK? So that's why you can talk about ethics and governance, which is a topic for another uh, presentation. But for now, let's talk about uh, how AI is going to, well, yeah. Now let's talk about also another interesting fact. Uh, when it comes to AI, uh, we have two different conflicting views. Uh, you have Mark Zuckerberg talking about an utopian era is going to come in which it's going to be abundance. But when you're talking about Elon Musk, he's talking about doomsday. Again, Skynet scenario. For those that watch Terminator, yeah, you might have the... <laughs> so uh, the jury is still out. I think none of them are right and none of them are wrong. But we will see where this is taking us. Nevertheless, we're entering the golden age of AI. And what does it mean for us? In Latin America, um, based on the Coursera skill set, we are definitely lagging behind. 37 out of 69 is our score. And what we see is that in areas such as math, machine learning, and data management, we're really, really, really behind. But why is that? Well, it's not surprising 
if you look our scores when it comes to maths and science, we rank 64 out of 70. This is for people that are 15 years old, kids. So definitely is, there's a structural issue that we need to overcome. And again, there's no silver bullet. We need to move multiple pieces for this to overturn. So now I'm gonna talk about quickly the seven blockers that we see in data science in Latin America. First one is data literacy. Data literacy is about being comfort comfortable about understanding and talking about numbers. One thing, for instance, that I, I struggle to sometimes uh, make people understand is that correlation is no causation, right? Not because there are more uh, ice cream sales in summer, uh, you will see more shark attacks, right? Simple as that. We need to be critical about the statistics that are being thrown out to us. We need to be critical about the numbers and charts that we see every day in publications. For instance, I just saw this a few days ago where uh, a very uh, important publication in Peru was showing like a stat bar and a pie chart that go over 100. Like very basic things, right? How can you display a pie chart that goes over 100? First of all, I will never pick a pie chart. I think they are terrible when it comes to display of information. And second of all, as they say, 73.6 of all the statistics are made up. Think about that. Another key point is digital transformation. We heard about a lot about this term recently, but what does it do? What, what is it? It's about uh, bringing everything, every function of the companies into the digital era. And this is the key of data science as well. I mean, how can you build a model if you don't have even data that fits that model, right? And this is very important, and it's where the US, for instance, has taken the lead. Why? Because around 80% of the US industry is service, right? And what we see here in the vortex, service industries are those who are being ahead of the curve when it comes to adoption. So there's a lot of work to be done there, but again, just one more step on the things that we need to change. Another blocker is language. Unfortunately, uh, for instance, I studied in a Catholic school, Jesuit Immaculada, and <laughs> unfortunately, English wasn't a priority for <laughs> in that time. So I had to learn English later in my life. What we see is Peru ranks 59 out of 89 uh, countries when it comes to English skills. Again, another blocker and something that we ne need to turn around. Why? Because Coursera, which is the leading platform when it comes to online education, has over 300 courses in data science, but only 25% of them are subtitled in Spanish, and 10 are thought in Spanish, right? I mean, you could argue that we can create more content in Spanish, sure, but also we can learn English, so then it will be easier to get access to the latest research and the latest education. Now, again, jobs, education, they go hand in hand. If there's no much demand in the market, there will not be much supply when it comes to education. How can we change the mindsets of uh, those that lead companies that understand the need for data science, understand the need to jump into this revolution? Just to give an example, there were only 300 jobs when it comes to data analytics positions in Peru, in Peru, whereas you had 10K jobs in New York City. Okay? That's a stunning. Now, internet access. As I mentioned before, internet is the pillar for democratizing access to education. Some of the interesting projects like Syllabus and the Startup Hero yesterday, ultimately will leverage the internet to scale. Because what I learned in Facebook is everything about scale. And internet is the key to that scale that they need to democratize the access to high quality education. We have 52% of internet penetration in Peru. We're lagging behind in the region. We're lagging behind in the world. How can we change that? Now, uh, also, we need to start uh, sharing about what are the applications of data science. It's not all about the fancy things that I explained to you before, such as Netflix, Spotify. It's also about chatbots for customer service. It's about disease outbreak predictions. It's about emergency response. All those things can be leveraged, are leveraging data science and AI. So let's spread the word. Let's make people and leaders understand what are the benefits of it. And last but not least, uh, it's all about lifelong learning, right? Education never ends. Education is a privilege, and we're fortunate to have access to it, so we need to keep pushing the democratization of education.
Uh, last but not least, uh, some personal and collective initiatives. Uh, because it's all about giving back, IT Mavic Rihanna, an amazing startup that's going to be big, big in the upcoming years uh, to launch a course in analytics and presentation of data. Uh, I'm also launching a portal called Data Sapiens that's going to be in Instagram, so you can follow it. And some uh, uh, efforts in the local community, data science group, uh, data science for business from the UTEC, uh, Universidad Pacific is launching a new program in, in Ingeniería de la Información, and deep learning uh, from the creator of Coursera is also going to be translated in Spanish. Well, I hope you learned something. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. Here's my context.